Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well as always. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at the Shatter solo by Bullet For My Valentine. So I'll start off by doing a little bit of a run through for you guys, then what we'll do is we'll talk about tuning and then I'll break the solo down section by section. So let's talk about the tuning real quick. Uh, we're in a drop B tuning here, which seems to be the new sort of bullet of my Valentine go-to tuning for all the new stuff. Um, so low to high, that's B, F sharp, B, E, G sharp, C sharp, okay? So basically that's a, uh, a C sharp standard tuning uh, and you're gonna knock the six string down to a, a B. So moving into section one, this is kind of like a, a precursor to the main solo. Um, it's got a little bit of a sort of Phrygian element going on with it if you know your modes and uh, it looks something like this. Okay, that gets spun around uh, quite a couple of times. Um, listen to the track just to see how many times it's played, but you're just going to repeat that. Um, so breaking it down for you guys, it's going to be... So you're starting off on the third string, you're going to slide into nine. And then you're going to be going from ten back to nine again, okay? Then you're going to land with your pinky on twelfth fret. And then you're going to go back to the nine ten idea, okay? So you've got... And then you're going to finish that with uh, 7 to 9. And then you finish that run with, which is 9, 10, 7. Okay, so, so far. And it starts again. Pretty much the same thing, but this time you're going to finish it with... Okay, so that's seven, nine, ten, nine again on the third string. And that's the full run. So you just repeat that, uh, the amount of times it's repeated on the record. And um, yeah, nothing too complicated there. I'll play it through for you again. That's the end of it. And then it starts again. Okay, so some very, very simple stuff right there. Then what's going to happen is we're going to move into section two. Uh, and section two comes away from this, um, comes away from this Phrygian idea and it just goes back into standard um, Aeolian or natural minor, if you like. Um, so if you know your modes and your patterns, um, you're just going to be a natural minor for the rest of the, the guitar solo. Um, so section two is this sort of, um, sort of like based around these dyads. Okay, uh, and you're all sort of in your box position from 12th fret, okay, and uh, it looks something like this. And we'll cut it right there. Um, so breaking that down, like I said, you're sort of following these little patterns right here, or little shapes if you like. Um, so I what I like to do is I like to slide in onto 14th fret, and then my first finger comes down onto 12th fret, 3rd string, okay, so you've got, and then you move to the next shape, which would be 1st finger, 11th fret, 3rd string, and then your middle finger takes care of 12 on the 4th string, okay. And then next after that, you're going to take your third finger up and you're going to go 14 to 12 on the fifth string, okay? So you've got like that. 
Okay. Mm. Then you've got this pedal point idea. So what I like to do is just bar my first finger flat on 12th fret across the middle two strings, okay, four and three. And I'm gonna go. Okay, so you're kind of making a little power chord shape there to begin with. That's a fifth interval. Okay. And then you're gonna do a fourth interval. So fifth. And then fourth. Okay, so fret wise, that'll be 14, 12. 12, 12. Okay, so you got. And then what you've got. Which is a hammer on and pull off. So you've got to bring your first finger back into 11th fret. And you're going to do a hammer on and pull off from 12. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it back down onto your 12, uh, your 14 and 12 on the fourth string, okay? So that's like that. And it's a very classic bullet, my Valentine, right there. Um, so, so far, what we've got. Okay. Then what we've got is this. Okay, so that you're gonna uh, go on the third string, okay? And you're gonna have your 11 to 12. And I like to do that with my first finger to my third finger because I need to get my middle finger to go up onto the 12th fret of the fourth string after that which takes me over to 14th fret, uh, fourth string. And you can hear it on the record, he kind of gives that note that he lands on there a little bit of a pinch, if you want to include that. That sort of a thing, okay. So, so far. Then what you've got. Same idea, but you're going to be sliding up this time on the third string, okay? So you're going to do your 11, 12. Middle finger drops on the 12th fret. And then your third finger can slide up on the third string from 12 to 14. Okay? And then you finish that with that run there. So that is the hammer on and pull off from 11 uh, to 12. And your third finger comes up. That's 14, 12, 14. Okay, on the fourth string. So all together. That's everything so far. Then what it does is it just repeats the first part. Right up to that part there, where you land with your first finger on 12th fret, 4th string, okay? So, so you're literally just repeating that first part again. Okay, so I'll play the full thing for you, then we'll move into the next section. That's it, that's everything for section two, okay? Uh, moving over into section three, this is where the big um, sort of six string run comes in and I'll play it for you now. Something like that. It's not too difficult, he's literally just following the scale pattern for that, okay? So the positions for this run. Okay, so it moves quite methodically. Um, so your positions are going to be uh, 14th fret on the 6th string. And you're going to go 14, 16, 17. Then you're going to come back, move onto the 12th fret, 5th string. And it's going to be uh, 12, 14, 15, okay? And when you do that 12, 14, 15, you're going to repeat that, okay? Okay, once you get to that point, you're going to move the position up and it's going to be the same finger pattern. And you're going to do 14, 16, 17. Okay, so you've got. Okay. 
once you do the uh, the fourth string part, 14, 16, 17, you're going to repeat that, okay? So it's... Once you've done that, you're going to bring it down a string each toward the floor, and you'll have 14, 16, 17 again, okay? So it's nice parallel patterns in a way, um, and uh, the finger pattern is going to stay the same, okay? So... And the way he gets that to sound so percussive um, is he puts a little bit of palm mute in there as well. Okay. And keep it all alternate picked, all right? So once you land at the third string with your 14, 16, 17, you're gonna play that again. And then you're gonna move it forward quite a bit to 17, 19, 20. Okay, and that's on the second string, all right? So, so far. Something like that, okay? And yes, once you get to the, uh, the second string, you are gonna repeat that same pattern and again. It's nice because you're just doing the first finger, third finger pinky movement right the way through, okay? Quite simple, so. So once you've repeated that last part, you're going to move on to the uh, the first string now. Exactly the same pattern, first finger, third finger, pinky. Um, so again, same frets, so it'll be 17, 19, 20, right? Um, and once you get there, you're going to sort of play it up, and then back down. And then you're going to land on the 19th fret of the first string, okay? So that'll be... So, okay, so I'll play it through for you. Slower. One thing when doing runs like that, that span from the sixth string to the first string, I find it really useful to sort of angle my wrist inward. And what I mean by that is like, you know, not like this, but I mean like sort of pivoting side to side. So it's always good um, discipline to keep your thumb on the back of the neck, because this allows you to sort of like move your arm and your wrist down according with where you're going. And again, if I, if I you know, if my wrist is coming this way, look, I've got like literally no reach. Right? And that's where people will battle out and they'll just start using the first finger, middle finger, third finger. But I find that it's easier to get the pattern properly by going first finger, third finger, pinky. Okay? And then for those of you who don't really like using your pinky but want to use it more, it's just a good exercise for that. Um, so yeah, so if you want to start reaching up there, just turn your wrist inward. You know what I mean? It just, you've got all the reach in the world then when you do that. Um, you yeah, know, and I'm, I'm sort of given the idea to the extreme there. I'm not that far over, but it's just ever such a slight... It's just ever such a slight movement. The other reason why you want to do that as well is it keeps your third finger and your pinky nice and close together. It's really hard to move your third finger without the pinky coming with it, right? Um, and vice versa. So the more sort of close to the strings they are, and or close to the frets where they're going to be going, um, the easier it's going to be because you're going to really be minimizing on the movement you're making. So that is your section three right there, and now we'll move on over into section four. So for section four, he pretty much repeats the same idea um, as section two, the melodic thing. Um, but he's just going to be doing it in a higher octave, okay? So that looks something like this. Okay, so it's pretty much the same pattern. The only thing you've got to watch out for is there's a couple of fret changes, even though it moves similarly. Um, there's a couple of things that are different, but sort of the notes um, and the way it moves, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just, again, higher up uh, in a higher octave, okay? So you're going to start by sliding in with your third finger onto 17th fret, second string. 
And it's the same thing with these, these little minor third dyads. Okay. You got your first finger on first string 15th fret. Then bring it in, which is 14, 15. Then what you want to do is you kind of want to come up with your third finger onto 16th fret, third string, okay? And that little, it's quite, that moves quite satisfying, that little run there. Sort of like stairs, if you like, just sort of like going up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to land with your first finger on 14th fret, third string, okay? And then what we're going to do is the same idea, just buy your first finger flat on uh, 15th fret, first two strings, and you're going to do your fifth interval. Then you're going to do your fourth interval, okay? Then what we're going to do same thing, okay, hammer on and pull off from 14, uh, from 14 to 15, okay, and then you're going to finish that run uh, with 17 on the second string and 15 on the second string, okay, so you've got, okay, Then what we've got is this thing. Okay, that again, it moves in the same way as the lower one, right? So it's gonna be. And he kind of picks every note there. Okay. So it's 14, 15 on the first string. The middle finger comes up onto 15th fret, second string, and then you're gonna pick 17th fret and the second string, so it's... Then what you've got, and I'm going again with this sort of um, middle finger to third finger thing. If you watch the live footage uh, where it goes quite close in on pads, you'll see him doing the same thing, so he can catch that 15th fret and the second string with a middle finger, because his third finger is gonna need to slide up on the first string, okay, so so you first finger to third finger middle finger drops on the 15 on the second string and then my third finger is available to slide up, okay um, from 15 to 17 on the first string, okay, so that's okay, and then it finishes off the same way okay, so that's your hammer-ons and pulls from uh, 14 to 15, then bring in the third finger up, on 17, pick uh, 15 with your first finger, second string, and then finish back at 17 on the second string, okay? So that's... Like that. Something like that, okay? Um, so I'll play everything we have so far. Then the next part, it does exactly the same thing, just repeats the first part and, uh, and cuts it. That's where you're going to cut it. Um, for the repeat of it, you're going to cut it right on 15th fret, second string, okay? Okay, so that's uh, section four, if you like. I'll play the whole thing for you now. That's where that cuts, okay, and that takes us into uh, section five, which is sort of like the final climb. I'll play it through for you first, and they'll give you the fret positions. So you've got... So this is a very typical Padge thing to do. He's done this in so many guitar solos over the years. So your patterns are gonna be 13, 15, 17 on the, uh, on the second string, and then you're gonna come up 
onto the first string and it's going to be 14, 15, 17. Okay, that's the only one where you're not going in parallel. Okay, so you've got a bit of a stretch here to start with. And then when you come in, you've got to bring the first finger in, okay? The next couple are all parallel. So the next one would be uh, 15, 17, 19 on the second string, and exactly the same thing on the first string, 15, 17, 19. And then the next pattern is 17, 19, 20. So first finger, third finger, pinky, and the same thing on the first string. So the first one is the only one that's different, all right? And that's what you're going to want to get to grips with first. And you know, think back to songs like uh, Pleasure and Pain and stuff like that. He's, he's done that loads um, across his career, okay? Um, so those are the patterns. But it's not that straightforward. Um, so the first run, you're going to... You're just going to play that through. Then what you're going to do when you get to the next pattern, this is where it goes a bit nuts. Okay, so that's your next pattern. Okay, so that's your first two. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come to the last position. And again, just land it in true patch fashion. Okay, so just follow the patterns. And you know, when you hear it in real time, you know, it just sounds like this big old flurry of notes that's just, um, you know, not possible to do. Um, but when you break it down, there is a pattern, there is a flow, it's not all random, everything mathematically works out, everything lands where it's supposed to land, okay? Um, so... One last thing I'll say about that as well is try going um, for the stretch, first finger, middle finger, pinky. A lot of people, and I did for years, for that sort of uh, every other fret position, I went sort of first finger, third finger, pinky, because we learn all the like pentatonic box licks like that. Um, but I found for licks like this, again, it comes down to this independence. You know, it's really hard to not move your pinky and your third finger at the same time. And I find that sort of like helped me back a little bit, you know, especially if you're going from third finger to pinky. So I found it's easier to stretch between your first two fingers, especially if you're doing every other fret, than it is with your pinky and your third finger, right? And this took me ages to get used to, and it might be the same for you guys. Um, but I found it's just easier to get that stretch there than that stretch there. Okay, and I had a lot more sort of independence here. You know, by going from first finger to the middle finger to the pinky. I'm not worrying about my third finger holding me back because there seems to be a lot of sort of light up here for me personally anyway. So when you watch when I do that run, even when I come onto the next one, I'm already prepared to go first finger, middle finger, pinky. And then obviously it changes when you get to the last one, first finger, third finger, pinky, because that's a smaller pattern right there, okay? So... Okay, and that is your section five. So what I'll do for you guys now is a nice slow playthrough and then we'll wrap up the video.
Okay, so that's all your sections from Paj's guitar solo for Shatter. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope it helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video and find it helpful, please feel free to hit the like button and even subscribe if you're new. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.